Hello, everybody. So, um, yeah, I'm taking advantage of today. Today is, uh, well, day of recording is uh, Labor Day weekend. It is the Monday, and my my wife and my daughter are out camping with one of my daughter's friends. Uh, they're coming back today at some point. So I'm taking advantage as much as I can because I really didn't get a chance the past two days. So I recorded the baseline. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm, gonna, I'm also going to share my findings on this machine. So we are talking about our friend here, the 2488. Um, so... First thing I did was I bounced, I did a bounce from uh, the TG here, so the tone generator, MIDI tone generator, over to 2324. So I took the drums that I that I had done the pattern for, like that I had gone through, and I bounced it. I actually found a mistake that I made in the pattern while I was listening to it bounce. And I'm like, oh, I gotta fix that. And so I kept listening, thinking, all right, just, just listening to it. All right, just in case I hear something else, then I can register it and remember to fix it. So I fixed it, redid the bounce again. Bounce is really easy on this thing. All I had to do to get the MIDI uh, sound off onto tra track 24 was I just hit shift bounce right there. And then I selected the MIDI channel and I press record on that. And then in, in um, that done, that home recording uh, supplement that I was given, the they they was they said to fader to push all the other faders down. So I made sure all these other faders were down. So then I just let it do it. I let it do its thing. It's done. And then I just turned off the bounce again. And yeah, it worked well. So this is set for sub mix. You got the stereo mix here as well. That's if you want to. So you do have a stereo bus on this as well. So that's nice. I haven't played with that yet. Um, so then what I did was I used our our guitar port here. I love this. I, I can see why they say this was made for guitarists. I love this. This is awesome. Just having it right here. Um, the other nice thing about this, I don't. I haven't tried the back yet, so I haven't tried any of the back inputs. But the other nice thing about this is, is when you plug into this, it will automatically, um, you'll, you'll hear it. So you, it doesn't matter if you have record down or anything, you hear it, it just goes through. So that's a nice feature. You can do that with the Model 24 as well, or the Model Series, the 12, 24, or 12, 16, 24. Um, yeah, so that's, that's an awesome thing too. I have a cat coming through, so just give me a second here. I'm gonna let her pass, she wants to go this is Ada. She's new. She's only, she's 12 weeks old. Okay, go on, go on. She wants to go hide. She sleeps below the, no, no, she wants to come back. Either way, so we'll leave that alone. <coughs> Excuse me. So then, yeah, so then I I, 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 I signed um, input H to track eight. Uh, not because it's there, but that's what I've always done bass on. I've always... Because because on the DP32, after eight, the rest are all stereo tracks. So eight is my base. Is my base. It's my last. It's my last uh, input, and that's the base that I used. Um, things I didn't like. So let me just. So I was not impressed. I don't know if it's because of the age of the machine. I'm gonna. I'm stressing that. So it may be better on somebody else's. But when I tried to tune using the tuner internal tuner for the base, it didn't work. So I was, it, it worked, but it was like, it was very difficult. So I pulled out my Donner. This is a DTI, DT-I tuner. I bought this a while back so that I had a tuner when I was, when I was uh, um, doing, doing the open mics that I just had something I could just had on my board. And there it is. That was prior to when I took it all apart. Um, the other thing I did was more because I just, I was, I didn't want to play around with the effects is I added the compressor that I bought from, um, from Wish. So this is a Mosky compressor. I use that. I had a full output, half, half sensor worked well. I just wanted something to, to, um, take care of the, to, 
to just take care of it so it was a little level on the base. I used my, you can see it sitting over there, the Steinberger, the five string. That's becoming my favorite base to use for this stuff because it just, the, the tone is beautiful. I love how it sounds. It works great. So I used that. And then I just, I went through, I even auto punched. So that was kind of cool. So auto punch, auto punch is great on this. I have no complaints. It was easy to set up. Uh, it took me a minute to figure it out how to set it up because there's a lot of, you have the shift key and there's a lot of shifting and you can't just, so I, you, I set the locations in and out. I think does it, yeah, see, right here, I'll just show you. So like even now, where'd my keyboard go? There it is. It's right underneath me. So even now, so there's auto punch. You can't just push auto punch to get it to go. You have to select it. Now I can't remember how I did that. <laughs> But you have to select that you want to use auto punch. Um, I'm not sure how I did it now. I can't remember. You have to do shift something. And so I set the locations. That was fun. That's That was easy. I turned on auto punch. Um, can't remember how I did that now. So I would have to look it up. I wonder if I have the, let me see if I have the manual still up. How did, I look, how did I turn on auto punch? Let me look here. Auto punch operations. Setting auto punch. Okay, so I have to have one track armed. So now can I auto punch? Nope. So then, uh, and then press, oh yeah. Press the auto punch key. No, it's not showing up. I can't remember how I did it. Either way. Either way, it might not be working now because I turned the thing off and I turned it back on. I don't know. Either so, yeah. So then it asks. So it, it asks you which. How do you want to do this? And so either way, I, I can't remember how I got auto punch to work. It, it did work. That's all I can tell you. So I had to auto punch the baseline because I had made a mistake halfway through and I didn't want to start from the beginning because it was my fifth time trying. So this is what I got so far. So let me just play it to you. I'll do the screen up a bit here. So here's what I got. Oh, can you hear that? Hold on. I'm gonna mute for, I'm gonna stop for a second and figure this out. All right, I figured it out. Um, the reason why auto punch didn't work was I was still in bounce mode. So if I hit auto punch now, so here's the auto punch button, hit auto punch. Then you can see on the screen here it asks you what do you what do you want so you got you can do your last take again you can do in out and you can do last last recording so you you have that ability to pick what you want to do um, I did it in and out because that was what I wanted and then as soon as you select it and say yes then no no tracks been so I didn't have a track selected oh let's do it again here we go auto punch yes there so now the auto punch light is on as you can see i'm not going to use i'm not going to do an auto punch um how do i get out of this thing oh just turn it off there we go okay so after i did the auto punch it actually says do you want to commit to it so it actually it gives you the option to commit it doesn't just commit it says do you want to this is your take do you want to commit so that's kind of nice i like that so you can do many takes and then it will you can pick which one you want to uh, to do so let me play this for you know yeah because I had I had bounce on so that's why I didn't play here we go so it's a straight bass line So what I did was I, I used the fills to say to signal to me change notes. So I played one one uh, bass part and I did the other bass part, like the, the change of the notes. So that's that's where I'm at now. Um, yeah, this is this this thing is actually very nice to use. Um, 
I'm not I'm not dissing anything else. It is very nice. Like I said, like the the tuner I wasn't impressed with. I don't know. It just it just maybe it's because it was the base, but I will be using the Donner tuner from now on for the rest of them because my I I always believe that it whatever you whatever tuner you use for the first instrument has to be used for the other ones because you want to be in the same tuning because not all tuners are the same. So that's my video today i hope this uh was enjoyable i'm like i said i'm learning things auto punch was beautiful um tuner yeah um and i like like i said i like the fact that as soon as i plugged into the into the guitar guitar um input i could hear it i didn't have to hit record it was already it was already being broadcasted so that was cool too so it, was, it it's so far so good enjoying it um i would have loved something like this back in 2004 when i was not recording <laughs> when i was when i was semi semi doing stuff behind you know quietly while somebody was making sure i didn't but yeah this is this is quite cool so thanks for watching bye